All right, so today we're starting a new series on worship, a mini series. So you guys get me for two weeks, two weeks in a row, okay? Yeah. All right, you guys are lying, so I need you to go outside of these doors and you can clap, okay? All right, it'd be fantastic. That's just a joke, all right? If you never heard me speak before, I, I do have a hint of the uh, spiritual gift of sarcasm, so I am so sorry about that. Uh, again, that's sarcastic. Ryan, just shut up. Okay, anyways, uh, some of you are like, well, I wish we had more worship at the beginning of it. Don't, don't be alarmed. We're going to have enough worship at the tail end of this message today, okay? So you know what's happening. And then we're also going to, as a family, as a church family, we're going to take communion after the message today too, okay? So get ready for that. You're going to stay in your seats. We're going to pass it just like the offering buckets, and we're going to have communion at the end of service. So let's pray before we get started. Father, I thank you for your word. And Father, I pray in this moment, God, that you would just speak through me. God, that it would be your words and not mine. And Father, I pray that you would minister to hearts today. God, that we would be people that would worship you in spirit and in truth. God, help us today. In Jesus' name, amen. So this mini-series is based off this verse. I just prayed it. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers, true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. The Father seeks true worshipers. Are you a true worshiper? Ask yourself that. Are you a true worshiper? Notice something in that verse right there. This is Jesus talking to a Samaritan woman. It doesn't say, uh, God is seeking public speakers. It doesn't say God is seeking pastors. It doesn't say charismatic people, gifted people, best looking people. But if it said that, I know it'd be talking about me, right? <laughs> best style, most Instagram followers, most TikTok videos, Steve Golding, right? Come on now. He don't have a TikTok. Don't go looking for it. At least I don't think so. You probably do. Yeah, that wouldn't shock me. Okay. Uh, but the father seeks true worshipers. He seeks people that will seek him with, his, with your life, not just your favorite song that's going to be played, that you seek him with your life. God seeks after true worshipers. So again, do you want to be a true worshiper? Ask yourself that question. I hope you do. I hope you do. Let's be intentional worshipers. As humans, everybody's a human in here, right? Pinch yourself if, if you're not awake yet this morning. Pinch yourself, or wise pinch your husband. Slap them if you have to, to wake them up. They can take a nap later, come on now. As humans, we're meant to worship. Every single person in this room, you were meant to worship. It's how God created us. We can't help it. It's who we are. We're meant to worship. It's what we do. It's how we're made. It's almost like it's in our DNA. If you grew up going to church, I did. I grew up going to church. And this may come as a shock to you. You're probably like, I thought worship is what we do in church. No, 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 no. We don't just worship in church. You might be thinking, I thought only religious people worship. No, 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 no. Everybody worships something. Christians, atheists, younger people, older people, people all over the world worship something. Worship is a response to what matters most to us. Let me say that again. Worship is responding to something, whether you're cheering, you're clapping, you're yelling. Some of you can yell. Okay, you don't need to yell today. Maybe it's crying. Maybe it's singing. That matters most to you. We all do it. We all worship. But here's the reality. Everyone worships something, but not every something should be worshiped. Think about that. We all worship something, but not every th something should be worshiped. Here's the thing about that. We're either worshiping God or we're worshiping something else. Who are you worshiping? What are you worshiping? You can't worship both. You can't worship things and God. 
You must trade one for the other because in its our very nature, worship is in the very most uh, value in our life. There can be nothing below, uh, there can be nothing above us or equal to it. There is nothing higher in your life than the thing that you worship. The things that we worship, we also serve. We also, we also serve those things. We live out what matters most to us. We become those things. We do those things. You don't just dance. You're a dancer. You don't just play football. You're a football player. Some of you wish you could still be a football player. You don't just sing or play music like Caleb. You're a musician. You don't just paint or draw. You're an artiste. You don't just marry someone. Okay, I said an artiste. Okay, you can laugh. That's okay. You don't just marry someone. You become their husband or wife. We become the things we value the most. Do you want to be a true worshiper? What do you value? So today we're going to be very practical. We're going to answer four questions. Who do we worship? When and where do we worship? Why do we worship? And how do we worship? So let's answer those questions. Number one, who do we worship? Well, if you didn't know, we worship this guy named Jesus here. We worship God. We worship God the Father, we worship God the Son, and we worship God the Holy Spirit. Three in one. We worship a lot of things in this life. Ourselves, our spouses, celebrities, money, fame, sports, and here I'm going to step on some of your toes, even politics. It's politics season, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna land here just for a sec because this is something that's with inside me. Sometimes we worship politics then more than we worship Jesus. And I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I legit saw a guy that I've never seen raise his hands in church before, and we sang, I'm proud to be an American. This gentleman stood out of his chair, it was not this church, okay, I'm not talking about anything at this church. He stood out of his chair, and he raised his hands for he's proud to be an American. I'm sorry, but you're worshiping America and not Jesus. You need to be careful. We don't worship America. We worship Jesus. You don't worship a political party. You worship Jesus. You're not a Democrat or Republican. You're in the kingdom of God. So stop worshiping people that you think are going to fix it. Jesus is the only one that can fix it. Stop worshiping Donald Trump. He ain't worthy. Stop worshiping Joe Biden. He ain't worthy. But Jesus is worthy. I'm sorry. I'm just stuck on this for a moment. We need to be Christians that worship Jesus. I mean, I love America. Look at me. I'm a typical American. Fat, bald, beard. Come on now. I love to eat. But if I worship America, then I, I get my mind and my worship off of Jesus. Put your mind on Jesus. Ooh, I'm sorry. All right. John tells us, the Apostle John tells us not to love the world, for the love of the Father is not in us. And tell you the truth, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of putting other things before God. John Ruskin said this, God will put up with great many things in the human heart, but there's one thing that he will not put up with in it, second place. He who offers God a second place offers him no place. If that hurts you this morning, say, ouch. Okay, good, I'm glad some people it hurt, because it hurt me, ouch. Stepping on my toes a little bit. Are you offering God first place in your life? I hope you are. Psalm 150 says this, praise God the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Hey, we're in the sanctuary this morning. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Come on, show far, show good, right, Jenny Hignite? Come on. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Now, Caleb did say worship team. If you can play the tambourine, just don't. Okay, anyways. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Not just one cymbal, but loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sings praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everything that breathes, praise the Lord. 
It doesn't say praise myself. It says let everything that has breath. Do you have breath this morning? You're taking up my oxygen. I can feel it up here. <laughs> praise the Lord. You know, the band doesn't come up here for practice. They get here about uh, 8.30 on Sunday mornings. They don't come here to practice just so you can be led in karaoke. Think about that. They come here early so that you can enter into the presence of God, so that you're ready for the word. You know, when we come together, you should be ready to worship Jesus with other people. You should come and be ready to worship Jesus with other people. Psalms talks, talks so much about praising God. I love the book of Psalms. Say, I want to I wanna learn more about worship. Read the book of Psalms. You can read it in 30 days. Read five chapters a day. There's 150 chapters. Some days will be easier than the next. Read the book of Psalms. D.A. Carson said this. Maybe. Here we go. There, we get. there it goes. Worship is the proper response of all moral, sentient beings to God, ascribing all honor and work to their creator God precisely because he is worthy, delightfully so. God is worthy of our worship. He's worthy of it. He deserves our worship. So we worship God. When and where do we worship is the next question. If I'm going to be honest with you today, worship isn't just singing songs, although we're talking a lot about that. Worship is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. How we live our life is an act of worship. Now, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. Sometimes I can be mean to people. And I've shared this before. It's just how I am. I love people. But if you ain't get my order right, look at me. Come on now. I, I'm not too happy. And I'm not too much of a Christian. Right? I sometimes let people know. The other day, uh, I was on the phone with Spectrum. And I'm just tired of Spectrum having a monopoly in, uh, in Mansfield. And uh, I'm just being real with you for a sec, okay? I didn't plan to share this. I'm just letting you know. But uh, they came. So, so if you sign up for Brightspeed, remember me because I can get some discounts. You know what I'm saying? So Brightspeed, which was CenturyLink, and I realize CenturyLink is trash, but uh, Brightspeed has now fiber in my area. Well, as soon as they came to my door, I said, yes, sign me up. I'm so tired of Spectrum. They always nickel and dime me. I feel like my bill's going up through the roof. Okay, this is the time we're going to really bash Spectrum right now, okay? But anyways, I'm on the phone with Spectrum to cancel, and the lady wouldn't let me cancel without talking to me for 20 minutes. I'm thinking, just let me cancel this. And so I'm on the phone, and my wife's yelling at me to calm down. And to just let it go, right? That's why spouses are good. They're there to keep you in check, you know? So I'm not always the most nicest person sometimes because I just want to relax and do what I want to do. I don't even know why I shared that with you. That's okay. It's how we live our life is an act of worship. Make sure that you're spending time with Jesus. You know, it might not be an hour every day. Maybe it's quiet time talking to God on your way to work to the gym, the assembly line at work, uh, and maybe it's just thanking God for what you do. But we can worship God anywhere that we go. We can worship him anywhere. You can worship him at church, at home, at work. You can worship him anywhere. I personally love praising God on my way to work in the morning. I only have about a 10-minute drive, but I turn, on, uh, I turn on worship music, and I, and I praise the Lord in my car. Now, when I lived in Chicago and my commute was 40, 35 to 45 minutes, I had a lot longer to praise the Lord in the morning because Chicago's stupid and traffic is nuts. But uh, there's people sometimes, they hear me singing and they know exactly what song that I had in my car radio that morning because it's on repeat and I keep singing it. And they'll make mention, well, we know what song you were listening to this morning, but some of my most heartfelt worship is when I'm driving my car by myself. And there's moments that I'm surprised I got to point, point B from where I was. It was literally Jesus take the wheel, right? But you can worship him anywhere and anytime. Psalm 34, 1 says this, I will thank the Lord at all times. My mouth will always praise him. It doesn't say that I will praise him part of the time. It says that we will praise him always. I will thank him at, at all times. And not only when we're getting blessed, can I be real with you for a moment? It's easy to thank God for your blessings. It's hard to thank him when you're going through trials. 
but thank him at all times. One, Psalms 105.4 says this, go to the Lord for help and worship him continually. When you're feeling down, we need to worship him. When you're in the mountaintop, worship him. When you're in the valley, worship him. Worship him continually. Psalm 113.3 says this, praise God from sunrise when it's sunset. Don't praise him. I'm just kidding, okay? Praise him at all time. And I would dare to say when you come to be a part with a body of believers on Sunday morning, you shouldn't be ready to worship at the third song. You should be immediately ready to worship. So why do we worship? That's the next question. Why do we worship? If we think coming to church and singing songs to God for 15 minutes is worship, then we're missing the point. We're missing the point. A song isn't enough. Yes, God loves our worship. God loves our songs. Even if you can't sing worth the lick, God still loves you. Sometimes, I think. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He does. But he also wants us to worship him with our actions. He wants our heart. Let's look at what Romans 12:1 says. It says this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Now, I know this verse sounds a little weird. And if I take anything from this verse is we sacrifice children, okay? I, I'm just kidding. We don't sacrifice children, okay? But come on, look at that. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. That sounds a little creepy, right? It sounds a little weird. But when you really think about that, offering your whole life, your body to sacrifice, that's holy and pleasing to God. It's holy and pleasing to him. We worship God because he is who he says he is. That's why we worship him. It's fact proven. Jesus really did happen. He legit happened. You want to know how I know Jesus really did happen? Because if, if he really didn't rise from the grave, people would have, would have, would have not have died for it. They would, have went, they would have said, okay, I'm just kidding. He didn't, he didn't rise from the dead. But people got martyred. People got killed because they went and got stoned because they saw Jesus with their own two eyes after he died on the cross. He is a living God. And we worship him in this place because he is who he says he is. And that's why we worship him. God loves us so much more and has done so much and is so much greater than any relationship we can have on this earth. We should want to abandon all for him and to live lives that are pleasing to him because living a life that brings joy to him is our spiritual act of worship. Let me read that again. We should want to abandon it all for him and to live lives that are pleasing to him because living a life that brings joy to him is our spiritual act of worship. Psalm 34, 9 in the message says this, worship God if you want the best. Worship opens doors to all his goodness. Worship opens doors to all his goodness. Do you want all God's goodness? Worship opens doors to that. Some of you know Bobby Mounts here. Uh, Bobby Mounts is, is a friend of mine. He goes to church here. And uh, he, he normally is my bus driver for events because his girls are in youth group. And uh, him and I get to talking at some things. And uh, a couple months ago, Bobby and I were just having a conversation. We were talking about like youth worship and things like that. And he said, sometimes teenagers don't understand it. But he said, I worship because I love God. Think about that just for a moment. Why do you worship? Well, I know Bobby Mounts worships because he loves God. And I will say, I worship because I love God. It's relational. That's why I worship Jesus. Because I have a personal relationship with him. And now there are sometimes I don't feel like worshiping. But that's my own doing. But I worship Jesus because I love him. Because I have a relationship with him. Charles Spurgeon said this, nothing teaches us about the preciousness of the creator as much as when we learn the emptiness of everything else. When you have a personal relationship with Jesus, there's nothing else that you want to do but worship him. Now, there's things we have to do, right? But there's moments 
that only Jesus satisfies my spirit and my soul. Only him. My wife can't do it. My relationships can't do it. But Jesus and Jesus alone is the only one that can truly satisfy my soul. You know, there are times I used to only worship when I felt like it, when I was good with God. But worship is not a feeling. Worship is a fact. We worship out of our love for God because it opens doors to his goodness. So how do we worship? How do we worship? That's our last question. You can worship him in many ways. Some of you are painters. Paint him a picture. Some of you are dancers. You can worship God through your dancing. And some of you can't dance worth the lick, so don't do it. I've seen you rhythm. You can't clap on beat, so don't dance on beat. David in the Bible danced before the Lord. Some of you are great with words. Write a poem to him. How I worship is I worship God with my hands lifted towards him. I worship God through my mouth while singing. I worship God by the way I live my life. I'm not perfect, but I worship him by obeying his word. You know, if you didn't know this or not, lifting your hands is actually biblical. Let me point this out to you. 1 Timothy 2.8, this is the Apostle Paul talking to Timothy. It says, in every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy. Psalm 63.4 says, I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. Psalm 134.2 says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. Raising our hands is the ultimate sign of surrender. But can I tell you, we also raise our hands from a, from a place of victory. Because Jesus is our victor. And we raise our hands in a place of victory. When you lift your hands, you're showing God you are worthy of my praise. And I don't care if I look like a fool because I want you, Jesus. There are times when I wouldn't worship when I was younger because I thought it wasn't the cool thing to do. But worship is not about me. But worship has everything to do with Jesus. <laughs> Ask yourself this question today. Is he worthy of your worship? Can I tell you today, folks, that there are times we're not worthy, but he is worthy. He's still worthy. You see, even in my sin and even in my, my stubbornness, he's still worthy of my worship because he is God and he can do all things because I have a personal relationship with Jesus. God has given us everything. He's given us another day. Therefore, we need to worship him. This is the safe place where we gather to lift up the name of Jesus. Bob Coughlin said this, to worship God is to humble everything, everything about ourselves and exalt everything about him. So here in just a moment, we're gonna humble ourselves and I'm gonna ask for the people that are gonna do communion to go ahead and, and grab the communion elements as we get ready for that. We're gonna take time to humble ourselves and exalt everything about God. John 4, 23 says this, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in the truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Do you wanna be a person the Father seeks? Do you want to be a worshiper the Father seeks? I don't know about you, but when I worship, I feel like sometimes I just bring a smile to God's face. I hope and I pray and I know it does because he's affirmed me in that, that I bring joy to God's heart, to God's life, to, God's, to God. I bring joy to him. I hope and I pray that I am a true worshiper. And I know that I am, but there's days I don't feel like it. But today, we're going to get the opportunity. We're going to get the opportunity to worship Jesus together in this place. We're going to get the opportunity to raise our hands. And we're going to get the opportunity to be unified today by taking communion. So if I can have everybody stand up.